guys so today I'm gonna bring you another tutorial this one I'm going to show you how to paint a wild mushroom forest little landscape I'm gonna be using watercolors but you can use whatever paint you want to use because I'm not gonna be doing any specific techniques or anything if you are using watercolors if You'll notice up here I have a jar of clean water and a jar of like messy kind of already used water with color in it already um, so I can take off the color in here and then get a clean brush out of here and clean water so it doesn't transfer the color. Okay so we're gonna start with the tops of the mushroom because that will help us place everything around them in our scene. Um, so I'm going to make the tops of mine a red, kind of like a poison mushroom. And I'm going to start with one large mushroom in the middle of my page. So I'm just going to do a curved u shape line like that then we'll kind of curve around like that same with this side over here gonna make that mushroom shape a little bit and then another U sort of matching but less less of a curve for underneath and then we're gonna fill this in if you want to leave little speckles on yours like the little polka dots you can just paint around them like here I could go like this if I wanted to put dots same up here I could just kind of make circles and leave that part open if I wanted to leave dots maybe we'll leave just a couple speckles on that guy okay so the next few to make our mushroom forest we're gonna do several we're gonna do a smaller one down here same technique as the bigger one so we're gonna do a u curved line and then curve around and under kind of like a jelly bean and fill it in, maybe leaving some little speckles. So there's our second mushroom. It's almost, you could almost do them in heart shapes if that makes it easier for you. Because mine kind of turned out like an oh, upside down heart on that side. So if that's easier for you to do, make heart mushrooms then we'll do a little little guy down here we will do our look there you go just do a heart just do a heart for him there's a baby mushroom and then over here We'll add a few to another partial U shape, curve, curve underneath, fill in our little bean shape or heart shape depending on what you want to do. Now while these are drying, especially if you're using watercolor like me, if you're using like acrylic paint it'll probably take less time to dry. In between 
Um, but while that's drying, we don't want to go anywhere near it. So I'm going to get some green and we're going to do some grass blades just hanging around beside them. So this will be like a very fine line or you can make thick grass if you accidentally make a mistake. I do There I did a little thing and we can just make this like a leaf or just a bigger blade or it's always easy to paint over if you want to paint over it and fix it. Let's do another, I'm going to go kind of this direction this time. A little bit shorter blade. All we're doing is just making like you don't have to do a straight line, you just kind of just let your hand flow down the page and we're making little blades of grass just meeting the bottom of our paper or canvas or whatever you're using. Let's see, I'll add maybe a short one right here. For me I'm kind of letting some shakes happen it gives it a little bit more organic look like actual grass where it's kind of uneven I'm gonna do just a little tiny lines down here and fill in that area Do another long one from here, I think. And this is definitely a part where it's your preference where you want these grass blades to go. will warn you it is kind of easy to get carried away sometimes and do too many so I'm trying to hold back and not do a ton um, and I'll add another one about right here going this way And then I'm going to fill in the bottom. Well, I see it's still things still need to dry. And you can kind of just bring lines up. You don't have to be precise. You just bring random lines. Kind of curve them a little. Bring them overlapping your other taller blades of grass. Now let's go ahead and jump to adding some stems to our mushrooms. We'll actually add some more mushrooms later, but we have to to the background before the foreground. So we're doing that. I got some yellow for mine. You can do whatever color stem you want. So I'm just gonna draw a line down for this big mushroom. Thinner at the top. And then you parallel this line until the stem and you can kind of flare it out like that. And we're just going from the center of our heart or mushroom top 
whatever shape you used and then we'll meet those two together and fill that in next ones mine are a little bit wet so I might get some color transfer here yep so we're bringing it down again and if you have a thicker paintbrush you can just do the stems as like one stroke like this Maybe I can add some here, and then it'll look like the bottom of the mushroom. Then this one's going to be a smaller guy right here. So we're going to do a thinner line in our center. Like that. And then this one is a little bit thicker, but not as thick as our big mushroom in the front there. Getting some more color transfer. This is what happens when you don't wait for your watercolors to dry. Although it'll turn into a nice orange. Okay, I'm gonna sit and let that dry and then we'll move on to the next. We're going to add a couple more tops of mushrooms to make it a little more foresty. Let's add one about here. There's our little slight heart shape right there. We'll do one right here. You can kind of place them where you'd like them, where you think they look nice to fill out this forest. Just go around adding in some mushrooms. They can kind of be more blobby too. They don't have to be heart shaped. I'm gonna put a small one right here, overlapping our big tall one. I'm gonna have to kind of put a line like that. Actually, a lot of these that we made hearts, you kind of can add a little depth to by adding a line. And that one's bleeding through because it's still not dry. Same with our big guy up here. Go like that. So it kind of has that underneath cone shape. Go back to adding our tops, random spots. It's almost kind of like making bell shapes all over. Or little gumdrops you could make too instead of hearts. Like 
some color to this one. It's looking a little more pale than the rest of my mushrooms. short stubby one. forest I actually actually I'm gonna add a very tall one back here see with our little like oh maybe you could make a boomerang shape too gumdrops boomerangs hearts Okay, and I'm going to let mine dry again, and especially if you're also using watercolor, I would definitely let it fully dry. I'm a little impatient, and I don't always like to wait, um, but I definitely would wait so you don't do an oopsie. But yeah, and then we'll go back to making stems again. So for our stems, same concept as before. I'm gonna use some orange this time since my other stems kinda turned orange. And I'm just gonna do our line down to the end of the page. Like that. And you're gonna do that to every single mushroom we added. And you can kind of make them curved, like they're leaning a little bit. That one got maybe a little bit too thick. But let me show you with this one. So you can kind of like curve them off to the side. And then make their stem over, like over here, like they're kind of a crooked growing mushroom I would also suggest that especially if you're right-handed 
you start over on this side of the page and then work this way. I did not do that. But that just means I can't press my hand to the paper. Gonna make like a long skinny mushroom happen over here. And then a front mushroom. Bring it all the way down to the edge of the page. Make this one a crooked mushroom. So you don't have to be doing straight perfect lines or anything. You can make this curve the other direction. Bring it down to the edge of the page. This guy's gonna be a shorter one. Just gonna end about right here. And then our tall one that I said was gonna be that here. Just gonna do a preliminary stroke. And then fill it in. And I'm actually maybe going to make it curve over here. So it's behind this one, but it's like curving up. Okay, so the next step will be to bring more grass blades all the way throughout our little mushroom forest. Um, so we're waiting for it to dry again and do that last step. Now we'll go back to our green and finish up with our blades of grass. Um, I'm going to start by putting one about right here. One, drawn out one. You're going to kind of want to use your what's called horizon lines. Like these mushrooms are pretty much on the horizon line. So you want to work down from there. So these grass blades are going to be next to these mushrooms back here and you're gonna bring them to that imaginary line instead of to the bottom of the page in this case and like before just kind of feel it out wherever you want to put some of these lines to be grass and try not to make just straight lines try to vary what type of line you're making so like you can do a squiggly one so I'm gonna do a long one kind of cutting through and you also want to watch 
when you want a blade to go behind one of these, you need to stop and then continue the line after you're on the other side of that mushroom. Otherwise, it will be in front of it. Another one behind this mushroom. And same with the grass down here, you kind of want to match it up to where these mushrooms end down here. And you can kind of overlap the stems too. Do short little lines. And if it helps, you can get a pencil and just draw a light line where the bottoms of these are to help you. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm going to kind of fill in a little with this green. Make some kind of rough jaggedy lines just kind of randomly fill in that space maybe even add some more grass to over here it's looking kind of bare side of the page. I'm gonna put some in front of this one. Fill in. We'll do an overall fill in of paint later. I'm just kind of also filling in to give myself that line. It's a thicker blade of grass. Definitely put my wrist in some green. Just looking to where you want to put these random lines. And also keep in mind that it's kind of like a bug's view or like a small critter view of this mushroom forest. We're like on the ground. Smaller than these mushrooms so you kind of gotta think about how that would look from that perspective. Row. 
And then this front row is going to be looking a little bit taller, maybe thicker. And if you go over the past ones you made, that's fine. Because the closer grass is going to look thicker and bigger, taller. I gotta think about what it would be like to be a bug. Or a fairy. Or whatever you want to imagine yourself as. Make one cross over both of these. Do some little strokes down here. I don't really want a ton of the bottoms of these stems to show since they're growing out of the ground. So I'm kind of trying to cover them. Make it look like they're more covered. Let's do one very dark, thick blade right here. Just making it darker. It's more in the front. Go back over here. Add some. Sometimes helps to have the right brush too. If you notice the shape, this is a round watercolor brush. Um, it kind of gives that ability to kind of press and move in the way of like a leaf or a blade of grass would go. So it kind of makes it easier for me. equivalence in like acrylic paint too. Acrylic paint just isn't as fluid sometimes, but you can add water to it and make it a little easier to move. Just not a ton like watercolor. Adding some little blades down here, not too many. Don't want to make it too busy. I'm actually going to add kind of a blade of grass. Going to stop there. And up through that motion. Then I'll do one kind of hiding behind this one. There. Okay. And then I'm going to use a different color to fill in. I'm going to use a lighter green. So I'm going to go back and fill in these white spaces. And with watercolor, you can kind of water it down more so that you're not completely covering it if you don't want to. Or you can just kind of try to fit paint in between what you've done already.
I'm kind of doing a little boy of this color a little bit, just to add some depth and make it come together. And there's our little mushroom forest. You can go back through once it's dry and maybe outline in black if you want to, to make it stand out more, if that's what you'd like. I hope you enjoyed this paint along video. If you'd like me to do more of this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know maybe what you'd like to paint along with me and learn to paint. Um, I enjoyed doing this little tiny painting with you guys. So if you did too, please give it a like and subscribe for more of this type of thing. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great week.